everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Linux Guy. Today, I'm on my Ubuntu server again that we set up in another video. If you want to see how to both install this and set up a graphical interface, please check out the other videos regarding that that I've already made. Today, I'm going to be setting up a server, which is the basis for most websites on the internet. Uh, this is called a LAMP stack, and that stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So I'm going to show you how to set all these up, at least at the bare base level, so that they're decently safe. I'm also going to show you how to do it all on one computer. Now it's best practice to put your SQL database in a different location than your website, so to have multiple servers, but maybe you can't afford that, or maybe you're just uh, tinkering around with some development and don't want to do that. You could have your various reasons for not doing that. I'm going to do them all on one server so that I don't have to switch back and forth, and I can do everything from the local host, but I just wanted you to be aware of that before we move forward. Uh, there's going to be some follow-up videos to this too. One of them is going to be talking about PHP MyAdmin, which is a useful tool for dealing with SQL databases. I'm going to show you how to install that and to make a few changes for another upcoming video, which is going to be about how to install a program called PeeWeeGo, which is a web server that is for sharing photographs. All right, so let's get going here. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure our system's updated, and then we're going to install Apache first. So let's go to our terminal. We made it bigger so you guys can see it better. And I'm on Ubuntu 20.04, the LTS. That should be good for close to five more years. It was released this year, so it should be good for quite a while still. So let's run our updates. Okay, once we're sure we're all up to date, let's go ahead and install Apache. At the time of this recording, Apache 2 is the most recent version, so I'm going to go ahead and install that. Go ahead and hit Y for yes, and wait for it to install. Okay, so the next thing we need to do now that we've installed Apache is make sure that our firewall won't block it, so that if we want to access this server from somewhere else, we can. So to do that, we need to affect the built-in firewall, which is called the Uncomplicated Firewall, or UFW, and we need to go ahead and allow incoming traffic to Apache. All right, we've updated our rule. Also, if you haven't done so already, I'd probably go ahead and allow both directions, SSH. So now that the rules are updated, let's go ahead and check UFW and make sure they're both there. So we see OpenSSH is allowed and Apache has access as well. We need this or we're going to have problems later on. So now that our Apache server is up and running, we can actually go to a web browser. And once we're in our web browser, we can go to our IP address. And mine is just going to be localhost because I'm on the server. And there we go. This is our test page. This basically confirms that Apache is working. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for now because we're going to need this web browser quite a bit in this process, but we'll go ahead and minimize it for now. If you're using a remote server, instead of localhost or your local IP address, you may need a public IP address. If you're using a web service host provider or something like that, they should provide this for you. But if you don't need it, you can use curl uh, with I can has zip.com. They'll do it. There's some other options too for finding your public IP for your server, but you just replace localhost with that. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to set up the MySQL server. So let's go ahead and clear my terminal and let's start on that. So this is also built in apt automatically. So we'll sudo apt install. MySQL server. Now some other builds of Ubuntu I believe have come with MariaDB. You should know that they're basically the same and these instructions should work for both except for instead of the package MySQL server you're gonna want MariaDB. But they function the same way. So let's go ahead and install MySQL. Alright now that we've got MySQL installed we need to set it up at least to a certain level. We don't actually need to set up a database right now. We'll do that in our next video. But what we do need to do right now is we need to set up MySQL secure installation. And basically this is going to set up some security things so that at least it's safe right now. We don't want our server to be hacked. So let's go ahead and run this immediately after installing it. This is, this is something you shouldn't skip. So the first question it's going to ask you is if you want to have it validate passwords. This is kind of up to you, but this will tell you if your password's strong enough. I'm going to not do that because for demonstration purposes, my password is going to be password. 
I might recommend you do this though because on a production server for something that's actually facing the public, you're going to want a strong password to make sure your database can't get hacked. So I'm going to do N, but this is up to you depending on your use case. For a public facing server, I'd probably do yes. So the next thing you need to do is you need to go ahead and enter your password. You see it's going to ask you to confirm. And now you have a root password for your MySQL database. Uh, this is for your root user. You can add multiple users. So they can have different passwords, but we'll get to that in another video. This is just the base setup. For the rest of the questions, you're probably going to want to just answer yes. So to remove anonymous users, we don't want them. So go ahead and remove them. Disallow root login remotely. This can be confusing because if you're SSH'd in, it's not considered remote. Because of that, I would go ahead and disable this as well. Any kind of access you should need should be able to SSH in and do what you need. So I'm yes, I'm going to remove this as well. You shouldn't need the test database unless you're doing development, so I'm going to remove that as well. And then finally, you, do you want to reload all the privilege tables so your changes take effect? Yes. And we're all done. And you see MySQL closes by itself. and that's it. If we want to test that it is there, we can go ahead and use MySQL. You can either do it this way, or what I think is a little bit more secure is to specify a user and then a password like this. And now you see we're in MySQL, and we can start configuring databases here if we want to. I'm going to just go ahead and exit it for now. So I don't think we need to do anything with it right now, but here is your database and you'll be able to build things in here later when you're ready to build your website on top of it. All right, so the last thing we need to do is set up our PHP. So this is the P in the lamp. So let's go ahead and sudo apt install PHP, simple enough. But because this is a lamp stack, we're going to need a few other things as well. So we're going to need live Apache 2. Remember, we're running ver version 2, and we want mod PHP. Basically, this is going to allow Apache to properly communicate. We need another one, too. We need PHP MySQL. So let's go ahead and install both of those along with PHP. We can do them all in one command like this. All right, with those packages installed, we can check PHP. There's our version. This confirms that it's installed. And we know for sure now that our LAMP stack is up and running. But there is one optional last step that I strongly encourage you taking, and it's called creating virtual hosts. Now, you can actually do multiple virtual hosts on a single domain, and I'm going to show you how to do this. So first of all, let's go to where our website is located, which is in var www, and right here is where I'm going to go. You see right here is a folder called HTML. If I go in there, there's an index.html. So right now, this is our landing page. This is our web page. But it is best practice to hold your domain stuff in this folder, in www, and have something called a virtual host. So to set this up, the first thing we need to do is we need to make a new directory right here in slash var slash www. So sudo mkdir for make directory and var www that part's optional it's just if you're not in this folder this will make sure it goes to the right place and since I'm going to be using PeeWeeGo in the future I'm gonna call this one photos now you can put whatever your domain is called here but I'm gonna call mine photos for the sake of what I intend to use later on with this same server so here we go I'm gonna go ahead and make the directory photos the LS you can see it there the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure it's owned by the correct person so sudo so ch own dash capital R for recursive and what I would usually recommend you do is this this is a built-in bash variable which automatically does the correct user which should be you and then again slash var slash www slash whatever your domain is called mine's called photos so we're gonna put photos now if we do ls dash l you'll see that photos is owned by the Linux guy which is me finally we need to go ahead and edit a configuration file uh, this is actually an Apache configuration file. So instead of going to the location, I'm just going to give it to you here. So we want to edit the file in Etsy.